This video is going to be incredibly hard to make. I'm not a movie critic, and I don't want this channel to be a review channel. I have my opinions, of course, everyone does. I'm just so happy that so many people are at a place of closure right now. We have a wealth of vehicles we can talk about from this four hour epic, and I'm excited to talk about each and every one of them, eventually. We're only doing one today. After this, I'll have covered both the Mercedes-Benz E-Class Cabriolet that Diana Prince drives and Mercedes's Vision GT concept. The E-Class Cabriolet doesn't make a whole lot of sense for Diana, but is this the right car for Bruce Wayne? To answer that question, let's look at Bruce Wayne's garage over the years before buckling down and exploring the Mercedes-Benz Vision GT concept. How many people are on this special fight team? Three. We have seen the picturesque garage worthy of envy time and time again. Tony Stark's display before getting blown to pieces in Iron Man 3 was worth hours of conversation. James Bond's access to a legacy of vehicles is nostalgia in motion, and so on. Tony Stark's connection to his car says more about his selections as an engineer, while James Bond's connection to his cars says more about how selective his team is for the mission at hand. Then we get to Bruce Wayne. The connection that Bruce Wayne has with his cars is as status symbols to flaunt his money and maintain his playboy billionaire status. To shorten up the plethora of TV and movie iterations, I'm going to go over the three arguably best Bruce Wayne actors tenure. Now notice I said Bruce Wayne and not Batman because some actors can be good in one role or the other or both. And here are my Bruce Wayne favorites. Michael Keaton, Christian Bale, and Ben Affleck. It also helps that they're the audience's most celebrated actors to grace the screen in The Cape and Cowl. These movies have surrounding cultural tones that set the precedent for different style icons of the time. Gosh, that sentence was hard to write and even harder to read. What I mean is, each movie was released at a time when the phrase stylish car meant something different. When Michael Keaton showed up to the scene, Clive Cussler's novels had set up a hero type that adored more classic show cars, like the early Duesenberg and Plymouth models. Dirk Pitt has an abandoned airplane hangar filled with his favorites, and each book jacket having one from the combined fictitious collection of Pitt and the real collection of Cusslers. The status symbol for Bruce to go with here was in line with the hero type of that era, and so we get a Rolls Royce Silver Ghost in Batman Returns. The Silver Ghost is always a safe fallback anyway. Christian Bale played Bruce Wayne during the early 2000s, and there are two competing views to the status car at this time. The Fast and the Furious burst into the scene four years earlier with resto mod muscle cars and imports, so one side was saying, we are building the fastest cars on the street. The opposing side was cinematically quieter, but still existed, saying, why would I go through all the trouble when I could buy the fastest production vehicles? Christian Bale's Wayne espoused the latter argument and used the Lamborghini Murcielago across the first two movies in the trilogy. Of course, Murcielago means bat in Spanish, which is a fun nod to a more civilian Batmobile model. There were hints to more traditional wealth symbols like a Bentley and a Rolls Royce, but having the Tumbler be the large and in charge Batmobile made for a good juxtaposition against the sleek and elegant Murcielago as the non combative Batmobile. Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne went back in time relative to the Murcielago when we first see him in 2016. The Aston Martin we see Bruce use to arrive at the fundraiser scene actually belongs to Zack Snyder himself. I could say and sort of force the point that James Bond was making a cinematic comeback in that Skyfall four years prior had reintroduced the famous Aston Martin back into the minds of movie audiences and so it became a natural fit, but that's not the case. This car was Zack Snyder's first big dollar purchase after his entrance into the film industry. A used car with high miles, he ended up spending $28,000 for it, and it's been in his garage ever since. 
It also made an appearance in Zack Snyder's Justice League when Superman returns to find Alfred working on it. And I think it's this reason that Zack chose to sport it as a Bruce Wayne garage piece, because the duo of both Bruce Wayne and Alfred Pennyworth are an incredibly capable pairing when it comes to building up and maintaining the Bat Arsenal. And this car, I think, is a meditative practice for them to set aside their work of superheroic endeavors and be in the moment. With Alfred's feeler gauge, a spark plug and wrench next to his afternoon drink, he's decided to distract himself from the impending calamity should the leak fail. The task at hand, installing new spark plugs. But first, of course, he needs to ensure proper spark plug gap. And then we have Bruce has a fun history of buying things just for the sake of buying things. I'm buying this hotel. I bought the bank. So buying the exclusive loan model for the Mercedes-Benz Vision GT is a really cool riff off of this concept. Oh, no other person alive has this car or could ever have this car? I'm gonna buy that. It's also an extension of Bruce building the Batmobile, a one-of-a-kind vehicle for one purpose. Now, instead of chasing down bad guys, it's maintaining the image of wealth and extravagance. The Batmobile idea is something I love about Ben Affleck's version and I'm thoroughly excited for when it comes to Robert Pattinson's Batman. In comic history, our ultra-gritty Bruce Wayne has developed, engineered, and built a fully one-of-a-kind vehicle for the sole purpose of extending his Batman ability. It's one of the gripes I have about the Lucius Fox built Tumblr. It still works in the story, but gives less credence to Bruce Wayne's comic identity of being super focused and disciplined, achieving all of these builds on his own. But I'm wading into a video I hope to make in the near future specifically about the Batmobiles of different Batwomen and men. Let's go back. Instead of chasing down bad guys, the Vision GT is more about the image of wealth. And this brings up an interesting question not about Justice League, but about Batman v Superman. Both of these are sponsored movies. They have to be with the budget that they require. FCA lends its cars' image to BVS, while Mercedes-Benz lends their cars' image to Justice League. I talk about this in another video I made for Ben Affleck, as well as my video for Wonder Woman's cars. So, if Bruce Wayne needed a Mercedes in Justice League, why didn't he need an FCA vehicle in Batman v Superman? Well, he does, but I hate it, and we're not going to talk about it. What the question should really be is, why doesn't he have a luxury FCA vehicle? Diana Prince gets the perfectly chosen Alfa Romeo 4C, and there are still a lot of options to come from the FCA list of brands. A perfect choice would have been the Maserati Alfieri concept, and if we backpedal and then continue the trend of using concept cars to emphasize Bruce's particular choice in vehicles, then the 2014 concept vehicle would have been a great fit but instead we have an Aston Martin and a Mercedes-Benz. Why? I think it's all behind the scenes personally. The Aston Martin in BBS means a lot to the director and that movie with all of its chase scenes and city destruction fills whatever quota is FCA enforced by showcasing Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Alfa Romeo, Fiat, all the heavy hitters for the global car company. Then you need to transition to another movie and another car brand with less global nameplates. But Mercedes has this amazing Vision GT concept that can be retrofitted for Bruce Wayne's character. I love the Aston Martin, and I love the Vision GT. They fit as extensions to the character and again present two sides. The capable and disciplined engineer, and the extravagant billionaire. To finish this out, I'm going to give the reins over to Zack Snyder and everyone talking about Zack Snyder's decision for this car. I'm being stingy with who I give the reins over to because producers don't really deserve any credit when it comes to this movie. Anyway, here you go, Zach. All right, I like it. Let's film it. Then we shoot rockets, right? Like after we have this conversation. <laughs> and that's really all the dialogue you need, right? But for real, Mercedes developed this car for a video game. Then a director comes along and says, hey, I like this car. Will you build it for my Bruce Wayne? Ben Affleck is 6'4", so they had to totally rework the size of the car reportedly around 10% before fully designing and building an interior that didn't even exist previous to 2016. A lot of money went into this one car and it's been talked about time and time again by both people inside and outside of the industry. It's the status symbol that Bruce Wayne is looking for while also being worthy of transporting the fastest man alive.
I just finished watching a movie I've been waiting five years to watch. I had literal hyperventilating shakes when it came time to watch Batman v Superman. After the three year wait, post Man of Steel. EVS was inspiration for me to start working yeah, out hard really and since 2016, I've been tracking about, and you know, have lifted about, over 6 million pounds. You know, it's hard not to get emotional about this movie. Zack Snyder is an imaginative visualist. There's no other words about it. His movies are like none other, and the decisions that he makes, while sometimes silly, like the E-Class for Diana, they shine through in visceral ways. Did Zack Snyder fulfill the question in this video series? Is the Mercedes-Benz Vision GT the right vehicle for the character of Bruce Wayne? The answer is, unequivocally, yes. Thank you for watching. This video was particularly fun to make. And I feel like this is how it should be done too, just one at a time. And so I'm sorry for including five cars in the Wonder Woman video. It's still good, but I think one at a time is optimal for giving the cars the focus they deserve. If you have another car you'd like me to analyze, let me know in the comments below. If you liked this, then hit the thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe because there's more of these videos dropping every week. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.